Can you see the stream? Can we see the countdown? Just wake up if you don't see nothing. Good morning, everyone. Uh, God bless you. Um, I'm not certain if you're getting this or not. Um, I'm saying you're having trouble, but my uh, my wife's sitting over here. She's saying that the stream is going well, and I uh, thank God really for you. Um, having the opportunity really to come on this site, really to uh, be a part of this uh, this message, uh, to hear it. Uh, I thank God really for your lives. Thank you for showing up and really tuning in to what was being said. You know, you can leave a comment here in the uh, uh, in the comments. Um, I really would look to try to see really just how many of you really would want to interact uh, with your comments. I'm pretty sure all of you would be having revelation of God's word today. And uh, but I pray it be a blessing to you. Uh, thank you for viewing it. I uh, really to hear what the Lord really has to say through me, because uh, I've been really wanting to actually to finish this up last month but actually Lord has shown me really to continue on uh, there is so much to it and so many places that the Lord has shown me really about the same message about eternity past eternity present and eternity future and the place is knowing that God is talking about eternity but he's talking about in each and every one of these in every one of these places of 
of spiritual time, of eternity, time of eternity, there are things that are happening and are going on. And you, we are walking, we were talking about this last night, about walking in an open heaven. And the question came up, you know, uh, do you wait till you get to heaven or are you already in heaven? You are already in heaven. When Jesus was baptized and said the heavens were open and they heard a voice saying, this is my beloved son who I am well pleased. This, the heavens did not close up at that time. When the baby was born and the angels showed up and they said, Hark, you know, unto, unto you now a child is born, a son is given. Okay, but then they, they disappeared and the heavens closed up and it was nighttime again. But for about one moment, eternity came into present where they heard, where the shepherds heard the angels from heaven acknowledging the time that was supposed to be, that was supposed to be deliverance of the child, of the child. But at the time of Jesus' baptism, it was totally different. Where the heavens opened up, it, the word does not say that it was, uh, that any, that the clouds, uh, that the heavens were closed. And one of the great things about this is that how did John the Baptist even said that, um, Behold, he said, the kingdom, the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus said the very same thing. And everything that he said, he says, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Why? Because it still was an open heaven. And uh, so I thank God really for, for the message of his word about eternity past, eternity present, and eternity future. And the things which that Lord really has given me to share uh, with this. Today we're going to be going, still going into uh, uh, 1 Kings chapter 18, pretty much going through the, this whole chapter. And we're talking about confronting false religions with your faith. With your faith. And Elijah had to, be, had to confront the ones that were actually looking to come up against him, the prophets, uh, the prophets of Baal, and also the other false prophets of, uh, of, of uh, asteroid worship. Okay? One group was from uh, Queen Jezebel, and the other group was supported by uh, King Ahab. Okay? Uh, so now, but let's, before we get there, let's, let's, uh, let's, just, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you now, Lord, for your word. We thank you, Lord. For the blessing that is, Lord, you cause us really to sit at your table and to eat, Lord, to eat your bread, O oh God, and to drink your blood. Father, show us the life, O oh God, which that we have today by reading you know, these Old Testament scriptures, Lord God. Let us put it, put a comparison, really, of, of what has happened in eternity past, that in eternity future here, as well as in eternity present, Lord God, that these are the things that we are confronted with on each and every day. Father, we thank you for the blessing of each person. They hear this message, Lord God, they will have life and life more abundantly, Lord God. They will be encouraged in their faith. Lord, we thank you, God, how did it be made whole in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, now we're going in here into 1 Kings chapter 18, starting with verse, uh, I'm going to put on, I'm going to read this one first here first. Start with verse 29 of chapter 18. And it said, they kept on raving, uh, uh, raving right through midday until it was time of the evening sacrifice but there was still no response and nobody answered and nobody paid attention now these were the false prophets who were actually both to be bringing down fire on on their on their sacrifices okay and they were hollering and cutting themselves and doing all kind of things you know and the word before this is actually said that how that uh, Elijah actually kind of teased them Okay, speak louder. Maybe you maybe maybe he's sleep or whatever things of that nature as to mock them. But the case is knowing that only the God that will answer by fire was going to be the real God. And a lot of time in today's society, uh, with how that we're being challenged, uh, not the the God is answered by fire because actually He's shaking the heavens and the earth. Uh, the word says that how that everything is going to be is going to be uh, tried by fire. And our work is being tried by fire as far as how we're, how we're attempting to get back to normal. But the thing is, there's cautions that we're going through on each and every stage. It says, not yet, not yet, not yet. And people have had to shut down their businesses. People have had to, to still keep themselves socially distanced from family members. 
uh, people are still are still getting COVID-19 and going into the hospital and some are dying unfortunately as well because this still is a crucial time uh, we have people that actually have lost jobs they actually that they are still waiting for the government really to give them some kind of compensation to help them along so that actually that they can try to maintain some portion of their lifestyle just as to providing food uh, electricity to uh, to power their homes with and these are things that they're being stressed with the food the, the uh, food bank lines are tremendous all across our nation this is not only the poor but it is the poor in spirit those that don't know God things that are going on and we're going to see really just by all all of these things Right, where right here in the portions of these scriptures that we're going to be sharing here today. Now, let's look at this as Elijah confronts these prophets here. Okay, and let's just go to here to 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 30. And it said, eventually, uh, Elijah told everybody, come here. We need to speak to people to tell them really to, that they can come to the Lord. That God is their refuge. God that God is their uh, is their refuge, their source. Okay? This is what we need to do. And here in verse 30 here, it says, And everybody approached him, and he repaired the Lord's, the Lord's altar that had been torn down. Okay? One of the one of the places of what is being has what has been torn down today is prayer. And this has been going on for quite a while. Pretty much you know those who really who love God that they would gather, corporately gather together to pray in your fellowships. You can have 5,000, you may have 500 get gathered together on Wednesday night Bible study, or uh, possibly or whatever, but then turn around, they're only a smaller portion that only gathers on night of prayer. And that's the nucleus. That's the one who's really providing the, the, the center and the life of what God presence is in that house and God doesn't need but a few he only needs really just just those really will look to look to follow him in spirit and the truth that's that there is always a life source there's always there's always a stream of living water that's flowing through the house and through the leadership as they as they give themselves over to the Lord uh, and we'll see here just what Elijah did knowing that he this is what he did also that he gave himself to the Lord, and when he finally, because he had all Israel to gather together there on Mount Carmel, all of Israel, I mean, I'm not sure, it doesn't say nothing about the number of them, but if you look in the commentary, it said how they were all over the place, as well as on the plateau of where they were, that he really spoke to them and said, oh, look, come here. Come to the Lord. Come and see what God is going to do. You you you've been you've been with you you've been with Ahab and the false prophets for three years now in a famine, and we've gone through a year now of famine time. I pray that you come into the Lord. I pray that you hear in His voice. I pray that just like with Elijah said, come here. That you are looking to approach the Lord, not approach me, approach the Lord, who is the God of Israel. What the God of the body of Christ. We say Israel, that's the body of Christ. The New Jerusalem. I mean, so many names you can we can name we can name myself. But the thing is a household of faith. That's another name. But the thing is here though, they just said he says here, he said that he repaired the Lord's altar that had been torn down. What is that? The prayer. The altar is the prayer life, the place where the offerings are supposed to be given. The place where they actually you're supposed to be praying three times a day. And just as you read in verse 29, it said that, that the false prophets, they were giving sacrifice and praying and praying and shouting and yelling and screaming and, and cutting themselves until the time of the of the evening sacrifice. They were doing it through two offerings. Now the third offering of the evening offering, according to the Jewish tradition and culture, and how they really that's like what Daniel did. He prayed three times a day. And although there were those that said, okay, look, nobody look when the, when the, when the horn sounds, nobody is supposed to really to bow down and worship no other God except for you, king. 
And of course, what did Nebuchadnezzar, as far as what did Daniel do? Daniel did the same thing when that is time of the noon sacrifice, the noon bell rang, he opened up his window towards Jerusalem, just as the word said, according to Solomon, that if you will pray towards this temple and where they were there in Babylon, in the land of the Chaldeans, that he turned and opened his window and prayed towards the temple in Jerusalem. Was he persecuted for it? Was he being threatened? Yes, he was. Just like today, we're being threatened too. Not not to gather. But but the thing is, do you we do we have personal prayer for ourselves? Can we pray three times a day? Or are we really too busy trying to really to just juggle things around, being there for truth? Why not is not just much more crisis of time really to get into prayer, get to prayer and fasting? Because God is calling all of us to pray and fast at this time. With the, the areas which that we are we are being encountered upon us. If I said that correctly, I'm, I'm getting my wording, kind of my phrasing and things, with I'm not a, a, a scholar of English. But we are being challenged. We are being pressed on every side in so many different ways. Okay, now, I, I put down here the, the word repair. The word is the, it's a, it's a primitive root word, and it properly means to mend uh, by stitching. Okay, I just how that you know, um, um, many of you are pretty sure you have been you've been cut so maybe some kind of way got a cut where they had to have some stitches where that they, they sewed it up, but in that sewing it up, it was a mending that happened where that you were healed. Okay, over a course of time, uh, during the time when actually I have a cut on I have a cut on my lip that actually that uh, uh, they had a stitch and they had to pull the stitches out as it healed they had to pull the stitches out. It was a little little bit painful, but it was not, not that bad as a little boy. But you know, today the, the, the stitches really what they do, they dissolve. You don't have to pull them out; they really just fall off. Okay, there's 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 a lifespan of time where they're knowing that when the skin heals, uh, that actually technology that do these stitches now they fall off. But just as it says here, and that is figuratively to cure, to uh, to cure, to cause to heal, uh, like, like a physician would. As far as to, to bring things to a place where that to be mended and to repair things, but thoroughly to make whole. That's spirit, soul, and body. To make whole. God, Jesus came to make us whole. Jesus, Jesus told the, the woman who issued the blood, he said, your faith has made you whole. Spirit, soul, and body. Amen. Okay, now let's let's move on here. All right, let's go here down. Let's put some scripture here up in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter chapter fifty eight, verses uh, ten through twelve. And this is what it says here, and it says, "If you pour out pour out, uh, pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted soul, then your light will ra rise in darkness, and your night will be like the noonday." Hey, this is this is great, great, great knowledge to know that we understand. If we look to be there for others, look to be there for others. Do you need it? Do you, do you need you in need yourself? But if you are a child of God, you are look to be a blessing to give to give unto others. The word says in chapter chapter twelve of of Genesis, because we both have the faith of Abraham. Abraham Abraham is the father of faith, and we're supposed to follow his example. Of what was being done, and that God God said about him, He said, "I'm going to bless you so that you can be a blessing. A blessing to who? The nations. That's who. The nations. So now, in doing in doing so, this is this is the response what we get that you satisfy the needs the needs of the afflicted. Uh, you look to uh, be there for the hungry. Okay. So then your light with your light will rise in the darkness, and your night will be like the noonday." The night will be like the noonday. Okay, that means that there won't be any darkness. Jesus says, Jesus says that if you have, if you have, if you have light, how great is the light? Or how great is the darkness? So now, which one do you want to be a part of? The, 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 there's not a gray area. It's either, either, you, either you're 
You in light or you in darkness? Verse 11 says, The Lord will guide you continuously by His Holy Spirit and satisfy your soul in parched places. In other words, although the places are parched, although the places seem to be barren, desolate, but He's going to provide for you. Just like we read, read in, in chapter 17 of 1 of Kings, okay? The, God had commanded a raven to give, bring him meat. That's a great message I heard years ago by a gentleman with the, uh, I'm not really can't remember his name, but he called it raven's food. Or what seemed to be given by a, sca a scavenger, by somebody who's un who's uh, unclean, unholy, but is there to provide food for the man of God. If you in the Lord, you are being provided for. Don't be proud. Don't say, well, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm going to God bless me. I'm not going to go out there into no food line. You're supposed to go out there into the food line. Humble yourself in the mighty hand of God, and he will exalt you in due time. So now we have to look at these things knowing that God really is giving us provisions wherever they may come from. Okay, now, and they will and they will strengthen your bones and you will be like a, a watered garden. I love how it says it in, in the New American Standard. A well-watered garden. Like a spring of water whose water will never fail. What water is that? That's the Holy Spirit. That always refreshes. It always looks to be there. There's always a place where actually you can quench your thirst in the Word of God. That actually, it gives you comfort. It gives you joy. It gives you strength. It gives it gives you the uh, the, the joy of knowing that God is there for you. And God has heard your prayer. We're going. Oh, this is going to be good. Praise Lord. Verse twelve. And your people will rebuild. Your peop Your people. What is that? The body of Christ. We'll rebuild. We'll what? The ancient ruin. What is the ancient ruin? The real place of where the body of Christ operated by faith, by the Holy Spirit, according to the book of Acts. That ancient ruin. We read the book of Acts and how powerful they were. Uh, they turned the world upside down. Uh, but... Are we doing that today, or is the world turning upside down on us? With all the shaking that's going on, do we see the things that is going on? Do we have a reality check, or really of saying this is what was going, this is what's going on in the present time here? But this is a place where that, just what it says here, and your people will rebuild the ancient ruin, as far as how we're supposed to be a divided Christ, how that we're supposed to be a life-giving source fully in the power of God of how we're supposed to function in the purpose of God that he has called us to in gifts and callings that we have okay and to rise and you'll rise you'll raise up the age the age old foundation they gathered in, they gathered in homes they didn't get we have church builders today we thank God for the church builders yes we go and go to one place of, of assembly but when we look to gather together we can gather together in homes. God has blessed where we can gather together by by resources of media, of social media. Okay, we gather together and to be encouraged, to be strengthened. And this is what the Lord really wants to do. Always calls his people to gather. Uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, I think it says, it says that forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, the more you see the day approaching. Hallelujah. Verse 12 says, And your people will rebuild the ancient ruin. You'll raise up the age-old foundation, and the people will call you repairer. Uh, the people will call you repairer of the broken wall or repairer of the breach, like a breach of contract. Uh, the breach of the wall, which they actually, they're supposed to be separation of church and state. They're supposed to be that way. Jesus didn't come here really to to really to compromise and to really to bring to bring the children of Israel more closer into the Roman Empire. He brought he took to bring a kingdom. 
and to tell the people, look, my kingdom is not of this earth. That's why we say, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, where on earth as it is where? In heaven. We're part of the kingdom of heaven. If you have your citizenship in heaven, you although you are a stranger here on earth, you have residence here, but the Lord says also occupy until he returns. Well, that means you have business to conduct here. You have a treasure that is an earthly vessel. That is the value of who you are, the Holy Spirit, to bring about change, to bring about this how it says here, a restore to restore of streets to live in. To bring the presence of the Lord there in a, u a unique and dynamic way in the dimension of the earth in the present time. and But we are all in the time of present eternity. Because we have a vision and perception of how heaven is and we look to cultivate that into the earth. Hallelujah. I'm not going to get too far here. My time is just about, is just about up. But let's look down here, verse 31 through 33. Lord willing. Elijah took 12 stones. That's the foundation of being of looking to take those 12 stones. He, God calls us lively stones in 1 Peter. But these are these are 12 stones. It says one for each tribe of, of uh, Jacob's descendants. Okay. To whom the message from the Lord had come that Israel is to be your name and to reign with God. To reign with God. But you take stone, it's knowing how to build a prayer life according to the pattern of really the twelve of the of what is the authority of God, of what God has established as a foundation. And Elijah looked to repair the altar that had been torn down. And he take first thing you do, you take stones to, to build an altar. Abraham took stones and built the altar first. Okay? Then what the next thing the next thing you, you, you do in, in building the altar, uh, verse 32, Elijah used the stones to build the altar in the name in the name of the Lord, but he dug a trench around the altar uh, large enough to hold 12 measures of seed. And that's about 22 gallons, 22 gallons of water. I mean, to 22 gallons, don't really the whole seat, but actually that's, uh, I mean, that's, that's five, five and a half gallons of, uh, of, uh, of where they add to, as far as the depth of what the whole seat in dry measure. That when they put those, the two measures, uh, the, uh, the large enough to hold two measures of seed, the two measures are like 22 quarts but it would actually divide that, divide that, and make it, make it, uh, make it more in unit form, uh, more understanding, like five and a half gallons, where you put five and a half gallons of seed in the trench. Why? Because what is he doing? He's building a personal prayer life. This is not, this is not the brazen altar which is at the temple. That's larger. When you gather together for prayer, intercessory prayer at the church, it's larger. But a place of personal prayer is at this place here of where, of where you are and knowing that you are building an altar to the Lord, wherever you may be. And you look to take the foundation of how things are done in the name of the Lord. Who is the Lord? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Your Garden of Gethsemane. Your time of going out early in the morning and to pray. To get away from the people that are doing during the time of maybe noon, but to get away and to what? And to speak to the Lord, to get direction, to get wisdom, to get understanding. God give you new revelation of how really to conduct yourself from from the time of the noon sacrifice to the evening sacrifice. Verse thirty-three. Then he laid the wood. This is the order of it. In order. There's a certain way you put the the wood on the altar. He cut the bull, which is a sacrifice for sin, but also is a burnt offering. It's a voluntary offering. Burnt offering is a voluntary offering, but also the, it also is used as a sin offering also, along with two sheep. But it's used the bull here. 
as a burnt offering, but it was also for use for for uh, for sacrifices as far as for sin offering to his Lord, and laid them on top of the wood. As a gentleman that I, years ago he said, God, he says, if you don't build an altar, you don't you can't you really don't think you're going to hear from the Lord. Because the first thing you have to do is to build an altar. What you have to build a prayer life to talk with the Lord. After that, you build an altar. Okay, that's just building the stones. That's the first part of it. But then you have to put wood on the altar. And you have to put a sacrifice on the altar. I mean, you put yourself on the altar. Then, if you do, the, if you do those two things, those three things, then guess what? Then you can put fire. Or where there's fire, there's smoke. And where there's smoke, God sees it as a pleasing offering unto the Lord. Because he smells the smoke. But you can't have fire if you don't have any wood. You will not have fire if you don't have any, if you don't have, if you don't put yourself on it. But guess what? Because God's consuming fire. He's going to look to burn stuff up in your life. He's going to shut down things. Cut the bull into pieces, verse 30, 30, uh, 33 says, and lay them on top of the wood. Now, this is the thing he did here, that he filled up uh, the, uh, he looked to take four pitchers of water, and he ordered, he ordered them, pour them on, pour them out on the burnt offering, and the wood. In other words, now he's going to do something to ask that that's going to require God really to come in. You know that God's going to, he knows that God's going to show up. He knows really just what the Lord, he's doing the things according to what the Lord is showing him. And that's the very same thing of what John, uh, Jesus did in the book of John chapter 11. God did the things, the things with that God was telling him to do when he was going back to raise Lazarus. And he did according to what he was told to do. And he was grieved in doing what the things that they were telling him to do. But until until Thursday night, I'm going to finish up here. And I pray your strength and Lord. Uh, thank you for watching this. I pray you pray you encouraged. Until Thursday night, 7.30, I mean 7 o'clock. Uh, God bless you. And let's pray. Father, I thank you now, Lord God. For those who will hear this word, be strengthened and encouraged, Lord God. We give you thanks, Lord, and praise for all that you will show us and you will do through us, oh God. We thank you for the relationship that you are building with us by prayer, God, and our prayer of faith, oh God, which that will strengthen us and then give us confidence and courage, knowing that we hear that you hear our voice. And Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise for the day. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>